Hi everyone, welcome to this module on OCI Load Balancing Service. My name is uh, Rohit Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. In this module, we'll look into what a load balancer is and the OCI Load Balancing Service and some of its uh, keys, uh, key, key characteristics. Before we get into the OCI Load Balancing Service, just let's look at a quick primer on what a load balancer is. Uh, as it's shown on the slide, a load balancer sits between the clients and the backend and perform tasks such as service discovery, health checks, and decides what kind of algorithms is used to balance requests across the healthy backends. So if you see here uh, in this uh, graphic here, there's a load balancer sitting between the clients here. And there are backend servers here. And the first thing load balancer does is it does a service discovery. It figures out what backends are available in the system. How should the load be load balancer talk to them? It does a health check, making sure that these servers are running. If a serv particular server is not running, it takes it out of uh, the rotation, etc. Uh, what are the key benefits of using a load balancer? The first key benefit is fault tolerance and high availability. Using health check and the various load balancing algorithms, a load balancer can effectively route around a bad or overloaded uh, backend. So if this backend is not working, requests are still coming in. Load balancer can can route it to a healthy uh, backend. The second big benefit is a scale. Uh, well, the whole idea of using a load balancer is to get higher throughput, uh, minimize response time, and avoid o overload of any single resource, right? Uh, and then load balancer order also does things like naming abstraction. Name resolution can be dele delegated to the load balancer. Backends don't need public IP address, for example, right? Uh, that uh, load balancer, if it's a public load balancer, it can do uh, the naming uh, abstraction. Now let's look at the OCI load balancing service and some of, it, some of its key uh, characteristics. So the first is, uh, of course, OCI provides load balancer as a service. Uh, to, to give you the scale and HA required for your applications. We have a choice of public and private load balancers. Different protocols are supported. Uh, of course, TCP, uh, also HTTP, uh, uh, even the newer ones like HTTP slash two web sockets. So the same ba load balancer does both TCP and HTTP. Unlike some other cloud providers, you really don't need two different uh, flavors of load balancer, two or more different flavors uh, of load balancer. Uh, to to handle your TCP and HTTP request. Uh, a lot of uh, SSL functionality is uh, is covered, whether it's SSL termination, end-to-end -end SSL, uh, things like SSL uh, tunneling. Uh, we also support advanced features such as session persistence and content-based routing. Uh, some of the key differentiators are, uh, well, we have a public load balancer and you get a public IP address with it. Again, this is different than some of the other cloud providers where you just get a C name. Uh, we, when you provision a load balancer, you get a choice of shapes. So think about this as sort of a provision capacity. Uh, so you can provision for 100 Mbps, uh, sort of a small load balancer, a medium load balancer, 400 Mbps, and a 8 uh, Gbps. The idea is you really don't have to pre-warm your load balancers if you provision a shape uh, you uh, according to your uh, 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 according to the load uh, that you are going to get. Uh, your load balancer can handle your request. You don't really have to pre-warm uh, your load balancer if you get start getting a lot of load. Uh, and like I said, you know, there's a single load balancer for both TCP uh, layer four and layer seven traffic. So let's look at uh, the OCI public load balancer and uh, let's see how some of its key uh, components work. So, um, <clears throat> well, it's a public load balancer, so it accepts traffic from the internet using a public IP address, which serves as an entry point for the incoming uh, traffic. It's a regional service. If your region includes multiple availability domain, a public load balancer requires either a regional subnet, which is recommended, or two availability domain uh, subnets, each in separate availability domains. We'll look into what that really means. Load balancer creates a primary load balancer and a standby load balancer, each in different availability domain, because the whole idea with a load balancer is to provide HA and fault tolerance. So the load balancer itself has to be highly available. If you just have a single load balancer running uh, and something happens in that AD, there's an outage, 
there's a chance that your load balancer would stop uh, taking incoming uh, traffic, uh, serving incoming traffic. So for that, your load balancer needs to uh, be highly available as well. Uh, and like I said, you know, it supports AD failover in case if you are using a multi AD region, uh, you have a primary AD, uh, you have one AD, uh, you are using two ADs, uh, the load balancer can fail between uh, between the ADs in case of uh, uh, outage. The way it works is floating public IP is attached to the primary load balancer and the event of an AD outage, the floating IP address is gets attached to the secondary load balancer. Let's look into, uh, into each of these uh, in, in more details in the next few slides. Now, very important to keep in mind, service treats the two load balancer as equivalent and you cannot denote one as uh, primary and uh, the second one as uh, secondary, even though we use that term loosely, uh, there is no concept of a uh, primary and a secondary here. So let's look at this example. This is, uh, of course, a multi-AD region. Uh, multi-AD regions always have uh, three ADs. I'm just showing uh, two ADs just to make the keep the picture a little uh, cleaner. Uh, as you can see, the VCN is a regional service. It's running across uh, the, the two ADs we have here. Uh, and then, uh, as you can see here, uh, we can get requests coming from the internet. And uh, we have a regional subnet here. Uh, so it spans all the ADs and we have created a load balancer. So the, when you create a load balancer, uh, you create a copy, uh, which is sort of the quote unquote active load balancer in, in, in one of the ADs. And the second copy uh, gets created in AD2. Uh, this is again done for, uh, for uh, HA purposes and you can see the failover gets created here. And then you have backends here. Uh, backends can be in, in AD1 or AD2. And the, and the load balancer can route the traffic uh, dip to to uh, to all the backends in whether, which, whichever ADs they are running in. Now, if in the previous example we use a regional subnet, in this one we have AD specific subnet. So the only difference is now my load balancer is running in in a subnet which is in AD1, and the other failover is running in another subnet which is in AD2. Uh, AD2. And my backends are in this regional subnet. So here we have a total of one one and one, we have three subnets in total. Uh, if these were broken down if, into its own AD specific subnets, we would have uh, four subnets here instead of three, we would have four. In the previous example, this was a regional subnet and this was a regional subnet as well. So instead of four, we just needed two um, regional subnets. So again, depending on whichever requirement uh, where you want to design your uh, application, you could either go with AD specific subnets or you could go with regional subnet. Just keep in mind for a public load balancer, we do uh, recommend that you use a regional uh, load balancer or uh, you use a regional uh, subnet. So let's look at some of these uh, concepts in, in a little bit more detail. So the first thing is listener, uh, which is the component which checks for incoming traffic on the load balancer's public uh, IP. So as we said, this is, a, this is a public load balancer. So it has a public IP address. Listener is sitting right here and it's listening for incoming traffic, right? Makes perfect sense. Uh, backend servers are application servers responsible for generating content uh, in, in response to incoming TCP or HTTP uh, traffic. So you have seen in this example, I have four backend server, right? And their job is to generate response. So request comes in and the response goes out from the backend servers. Now there is uh, something called a load balancing policy, which tells the load balancer how to distribute incoming traffic to the to the backend servers. And there's a choice of different algorithms, round robin, IP hash, and least connection. And we'll look into this in the next uh, couple of slides. Uh, so basically the load balancer is sitting here, traffic is coming from outside. Uh, now it has an algorithm here, an algorithm here, which says, oh, should I distribute traffic evenly? Should I always send traffic coming from this particular client? To a particular backend server and so on and so forth, right? And it does that. Uh, the backend set, uh, well, the, the reality is you might have many, many backends. So to manage them as sort of one logical entity, we have this concept of a backend set. Uh, so of course, you need backend servers in, in them. So you see the backend set here. Uh, you need a load balancing policy. We just talked about the different load balancing policy. And then you also need a health check policy. And with these three things, you uh, configure a backend set. What is a health check? A health check basically is a test to confirm the availability of backend uh, servers. Now, uh, health check supports both TCP as well as HTTP level health checks. The whole idea is if one of these servers goes down, 
because the health check is the load balancer is constantly checking the health here it can take out this this particular backend from service and start sending traffic to other uh, backends so what are these uh, load balancing policies uh, the first one is round robin it's pretty straightforward it's a default policy it distributes incoming traffic sequentially to each server in a backend set. So if we have a server in 81 and we have a server in 82, uh, the traffic would go sequentially uh, to, to, to these servers in a, in a round robin uh, fashion. Uh, <clears throat> and this gets repeated. The second policy is IP hash. This policy ensures that requests from a particular client are always directed to the same backend server. So if a client, if my machine, I have, have, uh, I'm sending requests, uh, it would go to a particular uh, backend and so on and so forth right uh, so that's uh, ip hash and least connection basically means that the load balancer routes incoming non-sticky traffic to the backend server with the fewest active connections so it's looking at which server has the fewest connection least connections and it sends traffic uh, to that particular server now the behavior of load balancer is different between uh, between uh, a TCP load balancer uh, and HTTP load balancer. And within HTTP, you have two kinds of uh, behaviors. One is for cookie-based session persistence, and the one is uh, the other one is non-session persistent or non-sticky uh, HTTP request, the first one being sticky HTTP request. So TCP uh, considers policy and weight criteria, right? Its intelligence is limited. So it just considers the policy and, and the three policies you define and the weight criteria. HTTP load balancer has more intelligence. So if you use something called a cookie-based session persistence, then it forward request using cookies session info, which makes perfect sense because you have sticky sessions. So it looks at the cookie and then it, it, makes, um, it, it, it makes a forwarding decision based on that. For non-sticky HTTP request, uh, the load balancer applies policy and weight criteria similar to how the TCP load balancer works. And, and again, some of these topics we cover, um, content-based routing, session persistence, sticky sessions, uh, we cover in more detail in our uh, level 200 uh, module. So you should definitely check it out. The final thing is health check. Health check is a test to confirm the availability of backend servers. Health check is available at multiple uh, levels. The first it's available for the backends. The backends make the backend set. So there is a health check for that. And then there is a health check for the overall load balancer. So what does it look like? Now, one thing to keep in mind uh, is um, load balancer can have up to 16 listeners. Uh, and these listeners are nothing but port numbers. So you can have a port 80, you can have a port 443, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, each listener has a backend set that can have one to N uh, backend server. So what does it look like? Uh, well, you have load balancer IP here. Let's say this is this is a public load balancer we are talking about. Uh, and then right here, you have listener 1, you have listener 2, and so on and so forth, right? You can have up to 16 listeners. Each of these listeners can have a backend set. Uh, so in this case, there's a backend set 1, uh, and this backend set 1 has three different servers. This listener can have another backend set. It can have two different servers here, right? So your health check is available here 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 it's also available at the backend set level and it's also available at the overall load balancer layer, uh, level so uh, you have this sort of you know different levels you can check if you know any of uh, these checks are failing and then you can troubleshoot and figure out why they, they are failing right uh, health api the health the which is behind the health check provides a four state health status so there is okay which means everything is good there's a warning there's a critical and there's an unknown Critical means for some reason the the backends are, um, are uh, you know have an issue um, and it's it's not working. Unknown means sometimes you would see that the status goes to unknown. So it means that let's say if you are using uh, HTTP uh, health checks uh, but you haven't configured your uh, response URL, uh, so it would return an unknown because it has no way to figure out how to get a response back, right? Uh, and and so on and so forth. You can read more about about these. In the documentation now one thing to keep in mind health status is updated every three minutes uh, no final final uh, granularity is available to this wait that period uh, to get the health uh, information so with that um, uh, that's all i wanted to cover in the first module on load balancer
specifically public load balancer. Uh, thank you for watching this uh, module. In the next module, we'll uh, quickly look, uh, take a look at uh, public load balancer in action. Thank you.